How are pipe organs like languages? Well, depending on where you hear them in the wild, that is, wherever in the world you find them, their sound is different based on where they live. Wait, is this something you already knew? Hmm. Shows about that. Hi, I'm Aaron Schaus, and in today's quick vlog, I wanted to talk about the sound of pipe organs. One of the many benefits of being an organist, apart from getting pretty good at multitasking and having an above average hand, eye, and foot coordination, is knowing that wherever you travel, the instruments there will have audible qualities that make them unique. Think about it. Practically every pipe organ is in a space unlike any other, whether it's the shape of the room or the material used to make the walls, ceiling, and floor and those all affect how we hear the sound the pipes make. Plus, organs are pretty well stuck in those spaces, basically built into the structure of these buildings. Not only that, but the way they're built by the different companies around the world is never the same, and the material, size, and shape of every pipe is different. So, with all those variables together, there's a special feeling you get when you realize organ music is individually bound to the places where they live. And when you visit those places, you're hearing a sound that's one of a kind. While just about every other common instrument can be fairly easily transported between various environments, the work involved in doing the same thing with a pipe organ is exponentially more labor intensive and time consuming. In a recent trip I took to England, I was able to experience playing pipe organs in many different spaces. And I wanted to show you a few examples of what I mean. First we go to Canterbury Cathedral, down in southeastern England. The cathedral here was founded over 1400 years ago, in the year 597, though the current organ is a baby by comparison, having only been here since 1886. And it was newly restored and expanded in 2020, and here when I visited in January of 2022, I was only the second American to have played it, following all that new work being completed. The console of the instrument is above one side of the choir, and you can hear the difference in the space of having some pipes near you. And some distantly across the room. From here we go to a palace, not a church, but yes, a palace, in the southwestern English city of Oxford, almost 60 miles to the west of London. This is Glenham Palace, the birthplace of Winston Churchill, and in this building there are in fact two pipe organs. One is in the chapel, and the other, which is the one I played, lives in the library. This instrument was put here in 1891, and hearing an instrument of this size in a room full of books and artwork is like a dry erase board, remarkable. Of course, being in Oxford, the site of many scenes from the Harry Potter films, I had to play this. Next up is also not a church, but a town hall, up in Huddersfield, further north in England, located in the beautiful Yorkshire region. This organ follows in a uniquely English tradition of placing pipe organs in town halls around the country as a means to provide regular music concerts and programs for local communities. And as you can see, this is no small instrument. It was originally built and housed in a hall in South Wales in 1860, 
and in 1881 was bought and placed here in Huddersfield, having gone through many rebuilds and modifications since then. I was fortunate to play here during some off time, courtesy of my good friend and fellow organist colleague, Gordon Stewart, who was for over 30 years the organist in residence at this hall. Again, you can hear how a large and grand space such as this really affects the sound of the instrument. Lastly, we go to York Minster in the ancient city of York, to the east of Huddersfield where we just were. The first church built in this site was in the year 627, and after many iterations and reconstructions, the present building was completed in 1472. Now, the organ here was originally from 1832, though has been restored several times, most currently in March of 2021. I was able to play here after an evensong service one dark winter evening, and to experience being in a place of such history was magical. I hope you could hear the differences in each of those places. English organs, to my ears, have a warm and full sound, and contrast greatly to the brighter sounding instruments of, say, France and Germany. Perhaps in future videos, I'll be able to show you what the instruments in those countries sound like as well. In the meantime, my most viewed organ video on this channel in fact comes from Paris, France, where in 2011, I played the famous organ in the church of Saint-Sulpice. I was an undergrad student at the time and was accompanying the choir from my conservatory. It was an unforgettable and amazing experience. But that's all for now. If you enjoyed this, subscribe to this channel and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.